Welcome! In today's screencast, we're going to take a look at modules. We'll also be using some of the concepts we introduced in earlier episodes. We're using the same environment we introduced in the first ES6 episode. Go check it out if you want to have the same setup we'll be using in this screencast. I've created an additional file called vehicle.js. We're going to code up some logic in here and use it in the usual app.js file. Right, let's start. We code up a class to represent a vehicle. We want to define a constructor to store the make and model of the vehicle. Here I'm using destructuring to pull the single argument variable apart into two variables which we store away. Let's quickly recap on destructuring. Destructuring maps from a single argument onto multiple variables. It's also a nice way to do named parameters in ES6. We're going to be writing out instances of this class to the console. So let's flesh out the toString function. In here, I use the template string to format the object into a string. Let's populate an array with vehicles. I start with my car, which is a Ford Focus. And I'll just duplicate this. Now I can add my wife's car, a Forester. And lastly, my trusty commuter bike. Now before we do anything else, let's go to app.js and try to import logic from this file. There are a couple of ways to import modules. We're going to look at two ways currently supported by Tracer. The one way to do it is using the import keyword. The import keyword is typically used to selectively import from a module. We can also use the module keyword. We use it like this to import all the exports from a module onto an object. In this animation I used greetings for the object name. We'll start with the module keyword. So we say that we want to assign a module called vehicles from the file at this path. Let's spit out the contents of our vehicles array to the console. Now this won't work, but I want to show you what happens if we run it. You can see it didn't resolve vehicles. That's because we didn't export the vehicles array from the file. Let's do that now. And now it works. I mentioned that there are a couple of ways to import modules, and I quickly want to show you a different way. It looks a lot like destructuring. We use the import keyword instead and wrap the variable we want to import in curly braces here. This makes a variable called vehicles, which points to the actual vehicles array in the vehicles file available on the scope. So we don't need to go through a module name here. This is a bit more selective than importing the whole module. At the moment, we're just exporting the array from the module, so let's see what will happen when we export multiple constructs. This time, we'll also export a function which we'll define now. We code up a function which will search the vehicle array and return the first match. Notice that I'm using destructuring on the single argument again. Now we call filter on the array and use the fat arrow syntax to return only items that return truthy when we call isMatch on it. isMatch is a function we'll define now. On the vehicle object, we go define the isMatch function and basically say it's a match if either the make or the model matches exactly. To use this function in app.js, we specify that we also want to import this function and make it available on scope here. We tell the function to look for a focus and assign the result to a variable. And now we log the results to the console. Seems like it's working. Now that we've got multiple items we import from the vehicle module, let's use the module keyword again and assign the whole module to vehicles. Now we need to prefix everything with the module's name again. So basically this imports everything from the module and make it available on the variable we decide on, in this case, vehicles. So we wrote some weird code to put modules through its spaces. 
but I'd really like to show you how I would actually model this code. Let's start by introducing a static method on our class, which returns all the vehicles. This is better than having this free floating array on its lonesome over here. We define static methods by using the static keyword before a function. We do the same for the find vehicle function and turn it into a static method for the vehicle class. And now we proceed to exporting the whole class with the export keyword. We need to specify the class name when we call a different static method on the same class. Seeing that we only have the vehicle class we want to import from this module, let's go back to the import keyword again. We want to change this console.log statement to use the result of the static method call. And the same for the find vehicle call. Now this is modeled a bit better, don't you think? And that's it for this episode. Modules might seem a bit boring at first glance. But remember, we're also going to have this available in browsers. So no more weird function wrapping is necessary to simulate modules. We'll also have the ability to import these modules on demand from the server as part of the language. Pretty cool, eh? See you soon!